Next, we want to look at so-called divisibility tests. Shortcuts, if you will. Now, in our example, it was a very small number because I didn't want to get caught up in the calculation side of it. We used 15 and this 5 and a 2. If I had a really big number instead of 15 and a divisor, how can I, without doing long division, without using my calculator, how can I decide if it's going to be divisible or not? By just looking at it. Yes, maybe there's a little bit of something I have to do, but much less than the long division, because if this number's big, long division will actually be long and not fun anymore. How, do, how can I look at the given number to determine if it'll be divisible by whatever the divisor is. The visibility tests. Many of them are trivial. Uh, we just sort of want to say them. And, and in writing them out, we learn a little bit more how to read uh, mathematical statements. So we have to look at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and I'm going to stop at 11, because after 11, uh, it's not as efficient anymore. Now, we're not going to do them in that order, because some of them are more, more tricky than others. We're going to start with 10. The easiest one. How do I decide, by looking at a number, if it's divisible by 10? Maybe the hardest question of the whole course. <laughs> All these things are the same, right? So I can't just say one thing by using another. I have to say what properties of the digits of the number. It ends with zero. And it ends with a zero. That's all it is. It's so simple. So let's uh, write, write it out. So that is done by what we call a proposition, and in the book it's numbered 9.2.1, just to be consistent. So what is a proposition? A proposition is a statement that's not super fancy, but there technically needs to be some logical argument to justify the statement. Now, to us, uh, the requirement that the last, the, the, the rightmost digit or the last digit is a zero is trivially easy. But if you see it for the first time, uh, it might not be obvious why. Why? So a proposition is sort of a, a mid-range difficulty statement. The fancy statements are called theorems. Propositions are not that fancy, but needs to be. Uh, justified so that no one has any doubt. So, let's write it out. A number, I don't know what the number is, right? Doesn't have to be a 15. A number is divisible by 10 if and only if the Let's say rightmost digit is a zero. So it seems like complete overkill because 10 is so easy. But I'm using the 10, it's our first one. I'm going from easy to more difficult. And I'm using the 10 to just get used to how are these things done mathematically. We're not doing it for every single one. I want to take the easy one because it's the easiest to just see how, how do those statements look, what do all the things mean in that statement, and how do I go about proving something like that. So I don't really get caught up in the difficulty of the actual test, that's super easy, but I'm more getting used to reading the language. First up is this. I think that's the only thing that needs clarification, perhaps. 
front door actually closed. That's why it's so easy. Not that it makes much difference. What does if and only if mean? That's a mathematical phrase. It really means equivalent. Meaning that I have this whole statement in two parts. The first part is what I'm looking for, a number being divisible by 10. The other part is how do I decide that? What is equivalent to that? The rightmost digit being 0 will give me the numbers divisible by 10. And if the number is divisible by 10, the rightmost digit will be 0. It goes both ways. These two, these two pieces are equivalent. So, <clears throat> on the one hand, uh, let's say it says, I'm only doing it for this one, so that you can read those things if they ever come up in the future. We're not doing it for every one of them, but we're doing the easy test so we can focus on the language. <clears throat> I'm going to write it out. If a number, I'm just going to shorten the number at least, uh, is divisible by 10, then it follows that the rightmost digit is 0. If I have 1, if I have the first one, then I have the second. But also, if the rightmost digit digit is 0, then it has to follow that the number is divisible, oh, can't write, divisible by 10. So the if and only if means it goes both ways. If I have one piece, the other one follows, whichever one that may be. They're equivalent, they're the same. Talking about a number being divisible by 10 is the same as talking about the rightmost digit being 0. So that if and only if equivalency phrase comes up uh, a lot, and I need to be able to understand how to read that. What is it trying to say? And many people just don't. We're not going to use it a lot, but it does come up in a lot of uh, these equivalency tests. Now, how do we then actually go about proving it? A statement like that. So, again, we're not doing it for every single one of them, but I want to see how something like this, what it looks like, so that when it gets more complicated, uh, the language isn't the issue, more the actual method is. So what would I have to say? I would have to, have to show two things. One is what we call the forward direction in the way it's phrased there. The first one implies the second, that's this. So I sort of symbolically uh, represent that direction with a double arrow. And the other one is the reverse direction. If I have the second portion, the first one follows. That's the reverse direction. So there are really two things to prove. That if a number is divisible by 10, what does that mean? And does, how does that lead to the rightmost digit being 0? Something so obvious doesn't follow right away. It's only because we've done it so many times. It's not an immediate conclusion. So the forward direction could be first, I have to do both. So I have two pieces in my proof. Where I will assume the first and try and conclude the second. So if a number is divisible by 10, or uh, let's say it differently. Let's say it like this. Let's say n is a number that's divisible by 10. Ten. Let's give it a name. I don't know what it could be. It could be any number. Let's call it n. What can I say by the definition of divisibility? What does divisibility mean? 
it means that I need to write something in there. Uh, that I'm going to write, be able to write the number uh, 10 being my divisor with no remainder. Right? That's the remainder. If it's divisible, there's no remainder. And again, we only do this for this one. We're not doing it again. So that I, because it's the easiest one, and I can just get used to the language if I ever come across it again. <clears throat> That's what divisibility means. That's the definition of divisibility. I divide 10 into the number, and I get no remainder. I don't know what the quotient is. So I say, there exists a number q such that we can say this. Now, I'm just going to use this space to make notes and observations. How do I, do I conclude from that that the rightmost digit is zero? That's much, that follows much more directly than it does from the original. Because if I break my number into uh, ones, my decimal number is tens here, uh, hundreds, and so on and so on, then I have exactly this split, if I split it over here, that this is automatically 10 times something plus the ones. But if the thing I'm adding is zero, that means there's a zero right there. And I can conclude that the rightmost digit in this number that I don't know what it looks like is in fact zero. I don't know what the number looks like. So I need this little bit in between to link the visibility with the digit so that it follows, so that someone can follow, yeah, okay, this. Uh, follows from the first, and this follows from that, so the whole thing makes more sense. I also have to then do the reverse direction, to have the if and only if, and say that they're actually equivalent. So let's say that n be a number with rightmost digit z uh, zero. Then I can write the number as, let's say like this, then n can be written as 10 times, I'm going to rewrite this in a second. Something plus the ones, which is the zero. This something can be anything. Let's call it Q for no reason whatsoever. In other words, N is 10 times Q plus zero. That is exactly what it means to be divisible by 10. That is the definition of divisibility. That if I divide 10 into a number, get some quotient, there's nothing left. So n is divisible by 10. Also note that in a proof, you can write words. You don't have to do everything symbolically. Actually, it's really hard to read if everything's uh, done symbolically. It's actually not good, uh, a good form to do that. Words make it much more readable. And we're done with the whole thing. So there are some concepts that we want to be aware of that we're not going to be proving much after this, but just a part of the mathematical language so that we understand what 
uh, concepts being conveyed. One is, what is equivalency in a statement? What is that if and only if? It means if I have one, I have the other. If I have the other, I have the first one. They are the same. They're interchangeable. Then what does it mean to prove something like that? So I wanted to do the divisibility, te divisibility test for 10, which is the easiest one, and get used to the language. And for the other ones, we'll just write down the test in a similar way to this one, and then understand how to read it. We won't be proving things anymore. Any questions on any of this? Just something I want to see, and then move on. Not using it all the time. Questions, comments? It is another language, which means sometimes things are more difficult to read. Just like any other just like learning any other language. It's not always easy to to read. But the concepts are being conveyed in that language. Next, we have the divisibility test for 5 and for 2, which are very similar to 10. Test for 5. I'm not going to write it as a proposition every time, but it is a proposition. It is a statement that has to be proved. A number is divisible <coughs> by 5 if and only if the right most digit is 0 or 5. It has a proof very similar to that, but we're not going to prove every single thing. We saw it once. We got an idea of how to read it. That's good enough. These tests, yes, they are very simple, uh, very familiar, but hopefully there will be something in this chapter that is less familiar. I want to be careful when it comes to the test for two, uh, especially. Let's write it down first. Everyone knows it. But how you say it is important. A uh, number is divisible by two. If and only if the right most, I'll squeeze a digit over here, digit is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. We then go further to say when a number is divisible by 2, we call the number even. You cannot say a number is divisible by 2 if and only if it's even. That's like saying a dog is a dog. You're saying nothing. It's not actually something uh, different. Even though you understand what you're trying to say, you're really trying to say this. And when a number is divisible by 2, that comes up so often we give the number a classification of even. But it's not a property that's predefined in any way. So let's write that down. When a number is divisible by 2, we call it even. The definition of an even number is not, doesn't exist before this test is established. So I can't use it in the test. There is no concept of evenness before the test for two. So I can't use it inside the test. But once I have the test for two, which everyone is familiar with, the definition of that even concept comes from that. Some of you are thinking that I'm making something out of nothing. That's okay. 
that's okay. But it is something to be aware of. You can't have circular arguments that you say, many people do this, you'd be surprised, outside of math. The arguments sometimes break down to, I'm right because I'm right. That's not making you right. You just go in a circle. You can't justify yourself. But pay attention, that's how people argue. Alrighty. So that eliminates 2, 5, and 10. 4, next. And I'll do it by example uh, for the most part. We don't need to get caught up in, uh, in a lot of it. So let's take a random number, uh, 54,136. Random. I don't want to use the same example as the one in the book. You can uh, read the book and have another example uh, just to see a little bit of variety. Now, just looking at the uh, last digit like we have for 10, 5, and 2, that's not going to cut it here. What we can do, however, is rewrite this to uh, 500, well, 54,100 plus 36. And essentially separating the number, separating the part coming from these two digits. And these are still in the hundreds, right? So the two zeros are still there. Uh, so then we can write 54 times 100 in brackets, no, 50, 541 times 100 plus my 36. So looking at it this way, how is that going to help me figure out divisibility by 4, essentially just looking at the number? Well, if I look at these pieces, I can notice some things that always 4 will divide into 100. Those are specific numbers. I'm looking at the 4. I'm looking at 4 right now. We've done these. So 4 is the, the visibility test that I'm trying to come up with. I'm trying to come up with a test. Yes, this is a, a single example. So I'm going to have to generalize it eventually, but 4 is the one in question. And I can always, regardless of the number, I can always break it up in some way like this with 100 there by separating the, these two digits and then the rest here. So I'll always have 100 inside the number somewhere. And 4 is perfectly happy with 100 in that it's always going to divide into 100. 4 times 25 is 100. So then the question is, what about multiples of 100? If 4 divides into 100, will it divide into 200, 300, 400, 540 hundreds? If, I, if, I, if 4 works in uh, one piece of 100, then having more of them, 4 will fit into each of those pieces. How do we formalize that in uh, the mathematical language? Well, proposition 9.2.4 says that in a more official way. So let me just write down the what it says so we can get used to reading uh, that language. I just want to write, make sure I write exactly like this there. So, if we take any two uh, numbers that A and B represent, or B any, I say numbers, but really we're looking at uh, positive or negative whole numbers, it's called integers, not fractions or anything like that, B any integers, 
You can think of it as whole numbers for convenience, but they could be negative, though we're not touching that. Then, if, now think of the B as being 4 and the A as being 100, but this is now making a much more general statement that doesn't just apply to 4 and 100. What do we see here? Well, I have 4 divides into 100. If I have B divides into A, then B is going to divide into any multiple, any number <coughs> times A for any integer N. That's pretty much the phrasing, right? Yeah. So we have to be able to read things like that and see how, and link it to a specific case that we're interested in. The specific case in this uh, situation is B being the 4 and A being the 100. And we always have 4 divides into 100. What that is saying in English is 4 divides into any multiple of 100 then as well. So, um, how should we say this? Uh, 4, so we'll have to say by proposition 9.2.4. 4 will divide into any number times 100. And in this specific example, I have 541. But in other numbers, it would be something else. But still a multiple of 100. So let's say here, in our case, n is 541. Now, something that's maybe intuitive and feels very immediate and obvious to you might not be obvious to everyone. We need the propositions, the statements in general to say that yes, these, this is how the numbers work. If I have one dividing into another, then it will divide into any multiple of them. And you can look in the book. How would you go about proving something like that? I don't want to get uh, sort of caught up and distracted by those technicalities, but every proposition has to be proved by a sequence of logical statements. Is there any question on how to read that general statement in the proposition and how it allows us to now look at this and conclude that the 541 times 100 will necessarily be divisible by 4. Any questions on how the general statement links to our specific example? So all I really want to do, apart from knowing the tests and using them, is just be able to read those propositions and see what are they saying in English and how does it help me to uh, be sure that the numbers work with my uh, device. So now, I'm trying to establish if this original number is divisible by 4. I broke it up into two pieces, one plus another. The first one, I've established, regardless of the original number, the first one's always going to be divisible by 4. If I look at this number, now in this case, it is also divisible by 4. If I have something that's divisible by 4 plus something else that's divisible by 4, is it necessarily the case that the original will be divisible by 4? Maybe some feel yes, of course it is. But it's not an of course. You need another proposition to say that. And proposition uh, 925 says that in general. Now you all have the book, you can open it to 9.2.5. And essentially, it's making a general statement saying, if I have a big number, in that case, they call it n, and I break it up into two smaller pieces, a and c, 
So the big number is A plus C. And the 4, which is B, divides into the first. Then it'll divide into the big number if and only it, if it divides into this little extra piece. So that means that the divisibility of, by 4 of the big number depends only on this. Because if and only if means equivalent. If it's divisible by this, then it's divisible by this. If it's divisible by this, sorry, if this is divisible by 4, then this is divisible by 4. So what I've done is I've reduced looking at this big number to looking at a two-digit number instead. So by this proposition, we can say uh, 5, 4, 1, 3, 6 is divisible by 4 if and only, I'm sorry, I should write this down, if and only if, which one keeps The extra little two-digit number coming from the rightmost two digits is divisible by 4. So if and only if means these are the same. Saying this is divisible by 4 is equivalent to checking that. And then the opposite as well. If this is not divisible by 4, I can't have this original number being divisible by 4 because there is equivalent. If and only if means the same. So the divisibility test for 4 is going to be checking the number coming from the last two digits, seeing if that number is divisible by 4, and that's a simple visual check, and then making a conclusion about the original. So regardless of how long or big the original number is, I only need to look at a two-digit number. Only need to look at a two-digit number. Let's write that down. Test for four, the visibility test. A number is divisible by four if and only if the number formed uh, let's say from the right most two digits if that is divisible by four. And I need an if and only if because the if and only if allows me to say that if the last two digits work with a four then the original number is divisible. But also, if it doesn't work, the original number can't be divisible either, because these two are the same. These two pieces in the phenomenon of statement are equivalent. <coughs> and a test like this is not obvious, and it's imme as immediate as the, the first, the 10, 5, and 2 were. It's not as immediately obvious why that would always work. I need general statements. Inductive reasoning by examples that is not sufficient to make a conclusion of how it works in general. I need general statements, which are called propositions, to say that regardless of what this number is, looking at the last two digits will always work. Always. You can look at examples all you want, but it's not 100% until you have a general statement. So let's, we're not practicing them until the end, no. Let's just make a random one. So we can just practice the four, but it is still fairly easy. The point of these tests is to have a simple way of looking at the number and deciding yes, it's divisible by four or not. Someone say random digits. Or we can just stand here forever. Seven, eight, three, one, two. One more. Six. All right. So that's a big number. I don't have a calculator. I don't want to do long division. I just want to look at the number and know if it's divisible by four. I only need to look at 26 and say, since 
4 does not divide into 26. Let's say it in some words, we conclude that 4 does not divide into that big ugly number. As simple as that. Just look at it. the test and all the work go, went, that went into the test. We avoided some proofs, but still uh, allows us to very quickly have a shortcut to say, yes, that is a multiple of four, and no, it is not. Questions, comments? So as we go, we'll speed up the, the process and become uh, less formal. But as long as you realize that there is a lot of work going in to show that these tests will always work. A test that doesn't always work, just works some of the time, is a little useless. I need to always work. And for that, I need deductive general reasoning. So what should be next? Maybe an eight. I just erased it for no reason whatsoever. I guess five, ten, first, then two. Now four is done. Eight is next, because eight is very similar. So the propositions are there and everything in detail if you need it. But I'll take a more informal approach because it's so similar. If I take that same number, I can again write it as 783126, 783100 plus 26, and then this is 7831 times 100, just like we did for 4. Oops, that's not. But if I'm looking at 8, eight does not divide into 100 like 4 did. So it's not going to be exactly the same, unfortunately. Because so sometimes I'll have a number that is divisible by 8, sometimes I won't. If this doesn't necessarily work in exactly the same way because 8 doesn't necessarily divide into 100. It could still divide into the whole number because this might be very convenient, but not because of the 100. But 8 does divide into 1,000. 8 times 125. So instead, let's take the 783126 and say 783000 plus 126, because then I can say 783 times 1,000 plus 126, and we're back in business. Now, by the same argument as what we used for 4, 8 always goes into 1,000, so 8 would go into any multiple of 1,000. Which proposition allows me to say that? Some don't have the book open, that is not my problem. If you look in the book, we've just discussed it. Which proposition allows me to say that if I know 8 goes into 1,000, I can conclude that 8 goes into 783 times 1,000. 9.2.4. 9.2.4. So let's write that down, not that you have to know these, but just to be aware that they come from general statements allowing me to say something about my specific example. So, <clears throat> this guy is always going to be happy always, by happy I mean divisible, divisible by 8. So if I want to make a decision about the big original number, again, I really only need to look at the extra little bit that gets added. These two are linked. And by proposition 925, this one is divisible by 8, if and only if that one is. And I have my test for 8, taking a big number to 
really just a three digit number. Let's write that down. There's four, eight. A number is divisible by eight if and only if the number formed from the, uh, we say the last digits, but that's a little vague, the rightmost three digits, if that number is divisible by eight. So in this in this case, we it doesn't matter how big the number is. There could have been many more digits. There could have been so many digits the calculator can't even hold them in one screen. I simply need to look at the last three to decide if it is a multiple of eight. So we can say since uh, Eight, not four. Does eight divide into one twenty-six? Maybe you need to do a little long division or something, but it's just a three-digit number, so that's much more convenient. It does not divide into one twenty-six. We can say, or we conclude, that it does not divide into the original either. So the, the aim of the tests is to take a big number and have a shortcut to immediately or very quickly say, yes, it's divisible or no, it's not. Now, looking at divisibility by eight, a uh, three-digit number might still require a little long division, but maybe we'll call it short division because it's always just going to be a three-digit number. So that gets us past 8. Uh, what do I have here? 3. Any questions on the tests for 4 and 8? They're very similar, but not the same. What works for 8 doesn't necessarily work for 4. What works for 4 doesn't necessarily work for 8. It might, but it won't always. I'm looking for a test that Say something that works every time. Every time. Any questions? Does it make sense? All right. A little different than the previous chapters. Let me just check so I don't miss anything. Okay, I'll take. Uh, I'll take uh, an approach similar to this by way of example for 3 and 9 as well. But please be aware that these have general propositions telling me that it's not dependent on my example. Uh, let's go random five digit number. There's no wrong answer. You can say any digit you want. Four, seven, eight, six. Oops, six. One. All right, that's long enough. We're going to go with that long. I have a reasonably sized number, and now I'm looking at divisibility by three. Now, 3 doesn't go into 100, doesn't go into 1,000, doesn't play nice with those numbers. Uh, so the test for 4 and 8 might not uh, apply to 3 in general. Let me see where I can go here. So we're going to have to do something else. What we can do, however, is just split everything up and say 40,000 plus 7,000 plus 800 plus 60 plus 1. And very early on, 
they do things like that, separate, say, words of cities. They have to write out 40,000 plus 7,000 for no reason that I can see. But splitting it up like that emphasizes the place value. Now, because of all these, this is 40 times 10,000, 1,000, 100. Three isn't happy with any of them. <coughs> it's okay, we're going to figure it out. She's like, it's not happy with 1,000? Out, done. Uh, but it'll still be, hopefully, convenient. So I can't do this. But what I can do is at least you know, four times 10,000. Just emphasize that a little bit. 7 times 1,000, 8 times 100, 6 times 10, and the 1 is on its own. So I have to do something with those 10,000, thousands, hundreds, so that 3 might be happy with it. Well, 3 is not going to be happy with 10,000, but it is going to be happy with 9,999, and then I have to have a plus 1 to get the original back. Same for this, I can't look at 1,000 and say anything in general, but I can look at 999, and then I have a plus 1 again. And I'll keep going like that, 8 times 99 plus 1, uh, squeeze it in here, 6 times 9 plus 1, and of course I have my digit here, right? Let's just, for the sake of argument, make that something else, like a 2. So it doesn't look weird. It could be any, any digit, it doesn't matter. Alright. What benefit does that have? Well, I'm bringing in some numbers. 4 was okay with 100. 8 was okay with 1,000, with 3 wasn't okay with those. So I'm trying to bring in numbers that 3 is okay with, all those 9s. All right, so next, does everyone know what the distributive property is? Distributive property for numbers. So you're going to be teaching. When you divide the 4 in the bracket? It allows me to divide, in, for example, the 4 into the bracket. If I have A times B plus C, and again, a general statement allowing me to do something with my specific example. Distributive. Just brought to change the camera back. Distributive property. Uh, if I have something like this, some number times in brackets something plus something else, which is exactly what we have. But I have a general statement to, to allow me to do something with my specific example. Then I have the first number times the first one in the bracket. That calculation, of course, comes first, but you can emphasize that in brackets. Plus the first times the second one in the bracket. You don't need the brackets, but it's nice to emphasize the groups sometimes. Distributive property. You can't not know it. There's no side, there's no sidestepping it. You will be teaching that at not that high a grade at all. So that allows me to simplify this. Oops, now let's turn the camera again. To say, I'm, I say it casually as I'm multiplying the, the A into the bracket. So that's, I guess, not really what we're doing. It just happens to look like that. So I have 4 times 9,999 plus 4 times 1 plus, now the 7 multiplied in. Then the 8 multiplied in, then 
then the 6 multiplied in, then the extra little digit that's just floating around there, the last one. Now, I didn't need to emphasize 4 times 1, right? That's just 4. And that's just 7. And that's just 8. And that's just 6. So I didn't need to go for that fancy. Now I'm just going to regroup these things. And have 4 times 9,999 plus 7 times 999 plus 8 times 99 plus 6 times 9 and just group them visually with a bracket. And then everything else, I'll group here, a 4, a 7, an 8, oops, that's a plus, a 6, and a 2. Now again, I'll say that I'm not going to ask you to explain all this detail ever. We just want to see it once, understand what the test for 3 is, and then we just use the test. So now, this number is divisible by 3. So is this one, so is this one, so is this one. So if I just focus on this for now, if I have something that's divisible by 3, any multiple is divisible by 3 as well. So this is also divisible by 3. So is this, so is this. So is this. And I have propositions that allow me to say that, because it always works. So now I have something that's divisible by 3, plus something else that's divisible by 3, plus something else that's divisible by 3, and so on. Is there a proposition that tells me that the whole thing is divisible by 3? Well, in a way, nine, no, in a, in a way, 9.25, I suppose. But I think uh, 9.2.8 is a little bit more clear and easy to read. 9.2.8. And what it says, just mathematically, that if I have a bunch of things divisible by a number, and I add them together, the whole thing is divisible by the number. So let's say it like this. The first bracket is divisible by 3, according by that proposition. Hmm? Any question? It's okay if you have questions. It's okay if you're not sure about something. Look at what 9.2.8 says. I have an A, B, and a C. If B divides A and B divides C, then the B is now the 3, right? If B divides this and B divides that, then B divides the sum as well. So that means for any example that I have, if I have a situation like that, I can use that proposition. It's making a general statement. So now what does that mean? I've essentially broken up this number, the original, into something plus something else. The first part is divisible by 3. So then again, like before, the divisibility of the original number depends on the divisibility of that second part. I haven't checked yet. So let's say over here, divisibility of uh, 4, 7, 8, 6, 2 depends on only this bracket. What is that bracket? Where does that bracket come from? If I look at the original number, where does that bracket come from? If I skip all the details. How do I get that bracket? By just looking at the original number. You just add up all the digits. Sum of the digits. So I didn't need to go through all of this. It turns out that the thing I have to check is the number I get when I add up all the digits. 
which is convenient because I don't want to do this again. Uh, so what do I get when I add them up? 11, 19, 25, 27. And 3 does divide into 27. Conclusion, 3 divides into 4, 7, 8, 6, 2. So the test for 3 is going to be a little different, though underlying it is very similar. I just had to change some things to get numbers that 3 is happy with. The test for divisibility by 3 is going to look at the sum of all the digits in the number. Test for 3. A number is divisible by 3 if and only if the sum of the digits is divisible by 3. Let's take another example. Random example. The number can be long, short. Well, I want something long, so I don't know the answer without the test. Let's just make sure everyone is writing. And the further we go, the more difficult it becomes to prove these tests in general. Yes, the three is specific, but this could be any number. And if you look at those proofs, you'll see that it becomes a little more technical because I have to be able to write this out like we did for our specific example without knowing what the digits are. Let's have a random six-digit number. Everyone just jumped in. It's not hard. There's so much agitation. There's no wrong answer. Four. There you go. Seven. One, six, five. I heard of you. <laughs> There's no wrong answer. It's so easy. You just shout numbers. Okay. I want to know if that is divisible by three. What I have to check is the sum of these digits. I'm just going to write down sum of the digits. Because I see the digits, I just have to add them up. Now, of course, we're doing that without a calculator, because we're trying to actually be better. When I add up all the digits, it's just single digits. What do I get? You take your time, but everyone is equally fast with mental arithmetic. It does not have to be She says 32. Is there anyone that supports her 32? All right, 32 seems to be. Now I look, that's a small number. It's just, yes, if the, if the original number is bigger and bigger and bigger, the sum of the digits will slowly increase in size, but not as fast. So we could say here, since, let's call this n, because I'm lazy. I want to write all this again. Since 3 does not divide into 32, we can conclude that 3 does not divide into my original. Simple as that. It's a little bit more, I guess, than that you have to perform a calculation by adding up all the digits. <clears throat> but after that, whatever 3 does with that sum of digits number, it'll do to the original big number as well. So the test was definitely a shortcut in that I, I can look at something small and manageable and make a conclusion about the big number. But it's not immediate from the digits in the number, I have to add them up. Any questions on the test for three? There's good news and bad news. The bad news is that as we go, the tests become a little more difficult. The good news is that for nine, the test is identical. Identical. Because of all these nines. I could say here with the same example, this 9,999 is divisible by 9. 
So any multiple is divisible by nine. So is this one, so is this one, so is this one. So I have exactly the same test for nine in that I have to look at the sum of the digits. And in this case, because nine divides into 27, nine will also divide in the original. So it is exactly the same test. I get two for one. That's kind of nice. So I'm not even going to write the whole thing again. Though you probably should. But it is in the book, so who cares? A number is divisible by 9. If and only if the sum of the digits is divisible by 9. Let's take the same example. Take my number, sum of the digits, 32. 9 is not happy with 32, so 9 is not happy with the original. Done. So easy. It is exactly the same. And really, it comes out again because the way I, sp I split up this number used uh, these nine digits in the number. And I was looking for a three, but the nine was happy with that as well. Any questions so far? Which numbers are missing in my list? Six is missing, yeah, so let's do six next. There's more good news. Six is not really a different test either. <coughs> but we do have to write it down at least. It's not as immediate as nine is. It turns out that if I, for reasons uh, we can't really explain right now, we need the next chapter. If I am interested in <coughs> checking if 6 divides into a number, I only need to check if the number is divisible by 2 and 3. So a number is divisible by 6 if and only if the number, same number, is divisible by both 2 and 3. Both. You can't just have one, I need both of them, then 6 will be happy. If I have just one and not the other, or neither one of them, 6 is not happy. Let's take a random example. You have another chance to just shout out digits how you feel like. Eight, five, three, four, seven, one. What I find funny is it's always one person. No one adds their own digits. They just let the person decide all the digits. What if it wasn't random? It's a dictatorship. Apparently it is, yes. Whoever says the first digit, says all of them. Okay, so now I have to check divisibility. Let's call this n for convenience, so we can reference the number, give it a name. Is the number divisible by 2? How do you know that? Because of the last digit. Now, to little Timmy, this is brand new, right? It's not obvious to him. We're so used to even numbers. So what can I conclude? Do I have to check 3 to say something about 6? No, the only way 6 is going to be happy is if both of them are happy. And if I lose 1 right away, we can say not divisible by 6 either. So let's uh, fix it a little bit and make this a 2 or a 4 maybe. Now that number is divisible by 2. And I don't know if it's going to be divisible by 6 until I check 3. But for 3, I need the sum of the digits. What is the sum of the digits? It's a little arithmetic, still much less than the size of the number might require. Sum of the digits is 31. 3 is clearly not happy with 31. And from that, I conclude that 6 
does not divide into the number. So I do get it for free, but I need to check two things before I can make a conclusion. I need both before 6 is satisfied. Any questions on that? The test, just out of curiosity, the test we've done so far, is uh, some of it new information, or have you known all this already? I want something to read that's a little new. I didn't know about the yeah. adding up the numbers. Okay, good. Of course, 10, 5, and 2. Okay, good. 4 and 8, is that new or not? It makes sense when you look at it now. Like, Surely I know this on some level already. All right, so it's good to add a little, little something new. Something new is always good. Now, what's left in our list seven. now? Seven. Only seven? Seven eleven. <laughs> that was lame, I'm sorry. Uh, we're going to do eleven first, and then seven. Sadly, seven doesn't play well with others likes to be different. Uh, but 11, if you review the test for 3 and 9, which uh, is the same, um, 11 is just a slight modification of that, but it's too much to fit in uh, to our lecture. I will just sort of give a little bit of a head start. So before the test for 11, we need just a little bit of terminology to be able to state the divisibility test for 11 as simply as possible. Many other books do it in a different way, but it's a little confusing to read, so I find this one as simple as we could possibly make it. Let's make a random number. Um, let's take, for example... Uh, I'll use a different one than there is in the book, 752,314. And we can split it up, uh, 700,000, 50,000, like we've done many times in the past now. 310 and a 4. So the this I can see as 7 times 100,000. 100,000. This is 5 times 10,000. 2 times 1,000. 3 times 100. 1 times 10. And 4 times 1 if you want to write that. So really these are powers of 10. This one is 10 to the power of 5. This one is 10 to the power of 4. This one is 10 to the power of 3. This one is 10 to the power of 2. 10 to the 1. And 1 is 10 to the 0. So what we are really looking at is the location of these digits that feature in my original number and I just want to refer to their position and we're going to count the positions according to the powers of 10 and it starts at a zero from right to left so if I spread them out a little bit and I write the positions over here this is position 0, position 1, 2 three, four, and five. So it starts with a zero. I'll call these the decimal position or positions of the digits. And we'll say, for example, um, three is in decimal now we don't have to say decimal every time because it's the only kind of positioning we're talking about uh, is in position well zero one two in the number 
752,314. So as long as you start by the positions from right to left with a zero, and notice how they correspond to the powers of 10 in this expansion, but we don't have to think of the tens uh, every time. We can just call it the position of the digit in the number. 5,187535. <clears throat> so this will just give us a head start uh, before we look at the test because we need it to uh, efficiently phrase the test. <coughs> Are we out of time? Let's just do one. We do one. One digit. It asks, uh, what is the, determine the digit in decimal position two. I'll do it this way, and you can do the rest. What is the digit in decimal position two? Remember I started with a zero. So it's a five. That's the only catch. That it starts counting from zero. Then 2a, determine the decimal position of the digit one. Where's the one? It's in the hundred thousand. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, they're both fives, but very different fives. And what is the term of the digit in decimal position number five? So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this digit is a one. Uh, digit in position zero is a five. Zero is the starting from the right, starting from the first one. Then number two, let's put that over here. Now we're just asking in reverse, what is the position of the digit one? Well, position zero, one, two, three, four, five. So a lot of fives floating around, but they all mean different things. Then the second one there is, what is the decimal position of digit three? One. Position one. Then what is the decimal position or positions of the digit five? Now the five occurs in multiple places. So it would be position zero, position two, position zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So there are many positions that digit five occurs in. Any questions or uncertainty what we mean by the place or position of a digit? Crystal clear. Yeah. All right. Now we need to check the visibility test or the divisibility by 11. So, random number time. Actually, I'm going to do it on this one. I'm going to need a lot more space. And the camera cuts off on that one, whereas for this one, it's the whole board. So, Random number time. Like, I don't know, five digits maybe? Five, seven, one, zero, three, four, five, six. Ah, uh, should be enough. Glad to see the dictatorship continues. Now, we're going to do the same thing. That it is 50,000 plus 7,000 plus 100, whoops, just 100, plus 30, plus 6. So I'm trying to, <coughs> trying to do something similar to 3 and 9, because checking uh, this did the last two digits, or the first two digits, that was a test for 4, it doesn't really work always for 11. 11 doesn't uh, like 100, doesn't like 1,000, so none of those would work. So I'm trying to do something like uh, the test for 3. So I start the same way. I'm just going to move this a little bit. 
So I have 5 times 10,000, 7 times 1,000. Let me just check if I have enough digits. That should be enough. Um, I'm just going to change the 1 to a 2 just so there's something more to write there. So it's not confusing. 3 times 10 and 6. Same as before. But now with 3, I went 5 times 9,999. Oops, plus 1. Would that same strategy work for 11? Does 11 divide into 9,999? Maybe use your calculator if you want to, it's okay. It's a big number. Does 11 divide into that? We did that because 3 and 9 uh, as well divide into this, which means we were on the right track. Does 11 divide into that? Yeah. Yes, it does. Okay, so that's good. That's what we want, right? We're focusing on 11. So this is divisible by 11. Good. Now we do the same for the next one, which was 999 plus 1. Does 11 divide into 999? Yes. No. You can't just say yes just because you want it to be. It is or it isn't. It does not. It's not divisible by 11. So we can just do it in exactly the same way as we did 3. So what else can we do? So that's not going to work. This is good. But it seems like we can't do this for every one of these terms. What we can do, however, is say 1001 minus 1. Does 11 divide into 1001? Yes, it does. So we're trying to stay close. We have a thousand here. We just need to go up and down a little bit. So this is divisible by 11. Yeah, I had to subtract one, but it's going to turn out to be okay. Then the 2 is going to be happy with 99 because, sorry, the 11 is going to be happy with 99. Divisible by 11. And then 3 is not going to be happy with a 9, rather 11 minus 1 to get the 10. So that that is divisible <coughs> by 11. And I'll squeeze in my 6 there. doesn't really need to be adjusted in any way. So it alternates. Every second one, I need to do something else with a minus instead of a plus 1. And if, you, if I keep going, if there are more digits, then <coughs> we would have a minus again, and then a plus, and a minus, and so on. So that's not so bad. Now, it's just a question of reorganizing this a little bit. So I have 5 times that, 9,999, uh, this one, 7 times this, 1,001, Two times that, three times that, and nothing else. That will group together. I still have to do five times one. Then I need to do seven times negative one, two times one, three times negative one, and the six. Now, for convenience, perhaps we can write this backwards. 6 minus 3 plus 2 minus 7 plus 5. Might be a little easier. So, because 11 divides into this, 11 divides into any multiple of that. Same for this, same for this, same for this. If 11 divides into a number, each one, if I add them together, the whole thing is going to be divisible by 11. So 11 is again, not, well not again, 
similar to 3, 11 is happy with this first bracket. We just had to do a little bit of an adjustment. So the divisibility test, or the divisibility of the original number, depends on the divisibility of this guy. So divisibility uh, depends on this number. Well, how do I get that number, though? How is it related to the original? It is the digits. Backwards, yes, and then a plus minus plus minus issue. So it is a little more complicated than the divisibility test for three, but it is similar. It is similar. It's manageable. So let's write that out in general. Our test for 11. A number is divisible. Whoops by 11 if and only if, that's the only test we need, if it works it's divisible, if it doesn't work it's not divisible by 11. If and only if the, let's say, oh how should we say it, the best way, I don't know how to look at it, but I want the phrasing to be consistent with the book. There are many ways to phrase it. If you look, now this is the position 0, position 1, position 2, position 3, position 4 in my example number. That's why I wrote them from right to left, because I'm counting positions right to left. And every second one is subtracted. Every odd position is subtracted every even position is added. So we could say, a little wordy perhaps, but one way to say it is, if the number obtained, let's say from adding uh, the digits in even positions uh, and subtracting the digits in odd positions, we'll get a number. If that number is divisible by 11. What are they doing? <laughs> really? No, that's on camera forever. Wonderful. <laughs> Just have to make these things up. Anyway, does that phrasing make sense? I didn't check how I wrote it in the book, but you have many ways of phrasing it. The book says, uh, divisible even only if the sum of the digits in even decimal positions minus sum of the odd decimal positions divisible by 11. Ah. So you can do them one by one, or you can group them all together and then subtract them. I don't really encourage that. It's up to you. As long as we know how to do it. So let's just do another example uh, just to be clear, but you can phrase it in any way you want, as long as you understand how to use the text. So it does come from the digits, that's nice, but a little more complicated than just adding them up. Not too much, not too much. Just a little bit. If you look at this in a book, you like to read books, you see this divisibility test in uh, another textbook, they're not going to phrase it like this. They'll use powers of 10, which I find unnecessary, confusing. Uh, it's confusing if I just need the positions, that's all I need. All right, random number that we'll call n. Let's have some more digits. Let's have seven digits. Six, four, one, seven, three, three, zero. How many were those? Seven. Right. OK. 
Okay. Now we are going to do examples eventually, but let's just do this one for 11 to make sure we understand the test. So now I have to check, not the sum of the digits, I have to, it doesn't really, it's not really called something, I have to calculate a number that I have to check. They're not drilling anymore, they're just not for fun. Well, probably not for fun, probably fixing something. What do I have to check? I have to check from right to left, the first one is added because it's position zero, then minus, then plus, then minus, then plus, then minus, then plus. So you don't really have to think of the positions, it was just uh, an efficient way to phrase the test. As long as you go right to left, you just add, subtract, add, subtract, add, subtract, because it's going to go position even, odd, even, odd, even, odd. Now depending on the length of the number, this last one, the left one, might be added or subtracted. So I don't want to start from left to right. From right to left, it's always the same. What do I get? Who knows? Negative 3 plus 3 is 0, minus 7, that's negative 7, plus 1, negative 6, minus 4, negative 10, plus 6, negative 4. Now the negative is relevant. The 4 is the only important thing, really, to check the visibility. And we can say since 11 does not divide into negative 4, we conclude 11 does not divide into, I'll call it N. N. So because of the adding and subtracting, you'll get a small number that you have to check, which makes it even easier. So the negative doesn't matter, like it, if it was negative 22 or something? Doesn't matter, it's a 22. Yeah. Okay. Doesn't matter at all. All right, just a note. Uh, I guess I can come up with an example. Let's come up with an example. I guess I can do that. Something special that I should see before it happens, maybe in the test by accident is, what if the number is something simple? I'm not going to worry about fixing it too much. Let's just do that. Uh, actually, no, this way. It can be longer, of course, but I just don't care. What do I have to check? From right to left, 1 minus 3 plus 3 minus 1. 0. So now the question is, I want to write it in the same way, is that a divisible or not divisible? I haven't finished that line yet. Is 11 divisible, sorry, is 0 divisible by 11? You want to say no. But it's a special case. And it actually is. Anything is divisible. So let's go back to, what was it, 15 and 5? Uh, I said 5 divides into 15 because I can write 15 as some number times 5 with no remainder. As long as there exists a Q like that, that's what we call divisibility. 5 is divisible. Sorry, 15 is divisible by 5 as long as there's no remainder for some number there. I don't care what the number is. Integer, of course. So if I now want to say 11 divides into 0, I, only ha I can say that if I can take the big number, which isn't big in this case, find a Q so that I can write that. Is there a Q that I can put in? Is there a number that I can put in place of Q for that equation to be true? Zero, Zero would work. So there does exist a number Q. 
it's a special situation that I just want to be aware of because it comes up in this test for 11 and nowhere else. So since 11 divides into 0, anything divides into 0 because of this. 0 is special. Uh, we conclude that 11 divides into 1, 3, 3, 1. And it does. Check in your calculator. It does. So the divisibility test should be complete. I shouldn't be looking anywhere else. So the test should say yes when I have something like 1,331. And when I have something like that, the 0 is the number that I have to check. And 11 does divide into 0. So when you see a 0 in the, in the divisibility test for 11, it's still a good thing. The answer is still yes, it is divisible. Nothing else is really weird. This is the only slightly strange one. But it does fit with the definition of divisibility. Nothing is broken in any way. Questions? No questions? All right. uh, let's do some exercises. Nine point, you know, I just looked at the number. Four. Nine point four. Now, when we separate the every three digits, we separate with a comma. But many people read 9.4 as if there are four separate numbers to check the visibility. That's just one big number. I don't know how else to write it. We use a comma. Maybe there's a space that looks weird. I don't know. So I will just emphasize that by not writing any sort of separators. This is just one number, and let's call it 10. Uh, where is it? 5, 7, 5, 9. Oops, that's a 5. Uh, 7, 1, 4, 7, 2, 8. Just a big, unnecessarily big number. And I want to check divisibility by 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11. Yes or no, yes or no, yes or no, yes or no. And why? Why do you say yes? Just in case you're wrong, I can check. Uh, was it just by accident? You miscounted when you added up all the digits? You do know how to do it? Things like that. So it's always good to explain yourself. Yes or no, is that number divisible by 2? Yes. Yes, we started out so easy. Because the last, uh, not the last, the right most digit is 8, which falls into the requirement for 2. Not because the number is even. That is not the reason. Even is what we call a number when it's divisible by 2. I can't say it's divisible by 2 because it's even. That would, mean, that would be the same as saying it's divisible by 2 because it's divisible by 2. That's not actually a reason. Divisible by 3? Now I have to check the sum of the digits. Sum of the digits is? Oh, that's what you decide on, please. 55. Hmm? 55. Wow, you're ahead of the game. I, it's not that I don't trust you, but I'd like someone else to confirm it. It's 55. It's 55. <laughs> uh, does 3 divide into 55? <coughs> Very much to you. Almost. 54 would have been good. But it's not 54. Divisibility by 4. That's a lot of silence. I'm not sure why. Yes? Yeah. Yes? Yeah. Because 4 divides into 28. And the last two, last two digits. First, last, who knows which way we're reading. I guess we're reading it left to right, so those are the last two digits. Uh, now I'm running out of space here. I've squished it too much. Uh, divisibility by 5? No. The right 
most digit is not a zero or a five. Divisibility by six. The only new one here is 11. You reviewed all the others, of course. Practiced them, thought about them. There's nothing else that you need to be doing. No? You don't take any other courses. Uh, no. No, because it's, it's not divisible by three. And for six, I need two and three. Is this too small here? Read this. Okay. I didn't love this. Give, me, give myself <coughs> enough space. Uh, divisibility by eight. Now that one may require a touch more work because I need to check 728 which if I don't have a calculator, that could be a little bit of long division, but I can't stop you from using a calculator in the test. Yes, yeah. So you just check it manually, it's a yes, therefore the big number is a yes. Siri might know, but <laughs> <laughs> she'll probably just Google it, and Google it does now, so. Nine, well, I already did the hard work, 55, and that's a no because the sum of the digits is 55. 54 would have been nice. 10, clearly not. The right most digit. Of course, you can phrase this explanation in whatever excuse me, way you want, as long as you have something so that in case you say yes, for 9, for example, <coughs> because you miscalculated the sum, at least I didn't know, you do know the test, so uh, I should give you something for that. 11, well, I need to check. Ugh, that's a lot of work. What's the number I need to check? If I go right to left, 8 minus 2 plus 7 minus 4, blah, 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 blah. I think it's like 9 minus 9. Nine. 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 nine or minus nine? Nine. Nine. And clearly that does not work. Eleven does not divide into nine. So zero is the only exception that you have to watch out for. Anything else, and it's straightforward. Eleven fits into it or not. And the negative doesn't matter. All right, that's not too bad. One was missing. Seven. 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 Oh, seven. Seven, just one special attention. That's really all it wants. It wants to have its own little subsection, and the only way it can manage to do that is by not having a nice divisibility test. No reason. Don't know why seven. Often, seven just doesn't play well with others. So, just on the camera. Because, yes, there are tests for seven. I really only care if you know one of them because it just gets more and more complicated. Uh, the downside is a test should make things faster. It should be a shortcut. Otherwise, what's the point? I can just do long division. And the amount of work that goes into the test for seven is pretty much the same as the amount of work going into long division. So it's not really beneficial. You can have a test just to have a test, but it should serve a purpose. It should speed things up. And the test for seven does not. But there is a test. Let's give a random, like, four-digit number. Four, seven, one, three. If I, I want to, in, in all these tests, I'm looking at a smaller number. Be it only one digit, maybe two digits, maybe the sum, I'm looking at a smaller number every time. So a test should sort of be in that uh, spirit as well. So we check, we separate the last, the, the rightmost digit from the rest. And then we just split them, split them up as if they're separate numbers. 471 and three. 
and I subtract two times that rightmost digit. Why? Why is a complicated question to answer. But the proof is there, and I'll leave it for you to read if you're curious. And let me know if you, if you want to discuss it. So what is the number that we get? It is going to be smaller, but perhaps not super small. 465, it is smaller, but not that great. Now let's just go all the way. Now I take this number and separate that rightmost digit and go 46 minus 2 times that digit. Get an even smaller number. That'll be 36 until I can just visually assess divisible by 7 or not. Since this 36, I can do it again, but it's sort of a little silly then. Uh, since 7 does not divide into 36, we conclude that 7 does not divide into my original number, which was this. Now, yeah, I know, no one likes that. I don't blame you for leaving. Was that really faster? Some say yes, a little perhaps. But how fast would long division be? Let's just do it. And sort of compare the two. And I don't think I save a lot of time. 4, 7, 1, 3, because long division is so familiar. Uh, 7 goes into 4, no, 7 goes into 47. 6 for 42. 5 left. Bring down the rest. 7 goes into 51. For 49. 2 left. And a 3. 7 goes into 23 3 times. 21. 2 are left. That's not faster. Of course, you have to be comfortable with your multiplication tables, but we should be anyway. So, I don't know, it's not a test worth actually using, that's why I'm not including 7 in the divisibility test questions. It's nice to note it, so you can take nine, section 9.3 as an interesting side note, but I'm not going to test you on the test for 7 because it's silly, it's, it's not beneficial. I can just do the long division. Thoughts? No thoughts. You're void of thought. There is no thought currently in your head. Is there anyone that has strong feelings that I shouldn't discriminate? Seven should be included in everything we're doing. No, we want to discriminate a little bit. Well, it's his own fault. Get a better test. Then we will add you. But it's just the way seven is. All right, so if you're curious why on earth is that the test, there is no intuitive reason. When you do the proof, it's just this. So I'm going to leave it by example. Yes, there's a general statement, Proposition 932, all of it's there if you really want to look at it. And actually, uh, it leads to something very interesting tests for bigger numbers like 30, 70, 23, all those have very similar tests. Uh, but this is just sort of a side note for interest sake. But I wrote it there so you can have the information if you want. Exercise 9.5 is a nice one I wanted to do. That is now a nice testable question. So we're given uh, some numbers, and in each one there's a digit missing. Find the missing uh, digit so that the number is divisible by the given number. Now yes, with a calculator you can do this in any way, it's trial and error, but trial and error is just a terrible problem solving strategy. Four, three, four. 
4, and I want it to be divisible by 9. So let's make it a little bit more mathematically convenient and put a letter or a symbol in place of that digit. Let's call it X, the mystery digit. Now using the test for 9, I'm going to have to add up all the digits. Some of the digits is 7 plus x plus 4 plus 3 plus 4, giving me 7, 11, 14, 18 plus x. Don't let the x scare you, it's just a placeholder for a number I'm trying to figure out. So now 9 has to go into this, 18 plus something. I want to slowly introduce symbols representing hidden numbers, because that is part 4. But for now, just get used to using a letter to represent a mystery number. What are my options for that number? Well, 0 to 9. 9 has to divide into this. So what are the options for that mystery x? Well, 0 would work, because then I have 18, and 9 divides into 18. And 1, 2, 3, 4, would they work? No, because then I go to 19, 20, and 9 doesn't like any of those. Is there another value for x that would work? 9 would also work. So the question asks, what are the missing digits? In this case, there are two possibilities, 0 or 9. And now I can put it in. So I could check to see if 9 divides into 7, 0, 4, 3, 4, and 9 divides into 7, 9, 4, 3, 4. Check it. Put your calculator, I can't stop you. So there's really no need to have anything wrong in these questions because you can check. Does it work? It's good to check because I could have made a little addition mistake here, right? So you have that check, and there's no need to get, with no reason to get this wrong at all. All right. But our knowledge of the divisibility test does make this uh, faster so that you don't waste time plugging in a 0, getting it to work and then stopping, or a 1, doing the whole division on your calculator. I'd be done by then. <coughs> Number 2. Uh, blah, 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 blah. I want it to be divisible by 8. And it's 4, 3, 6, something, 8, 6. Now, I have to know my divisibility test for 8, so I don't just plug in every possible digit on, and test it on my calculator. That seems a little silly. What is the divisibility test for 8? Let's put a little number in there. Uh, I just require that 8 divides into, I put a line under it, otherwise sometimes when you use variables with numbers it means multiplication, and that's not what we're doing here at all. It's just a placeholder for that digit, something 8, 6. Now that's perhaps a little more tedious, and my calculator would come in handy. But it's less to, to do on my calculator. What options? There's a little bit of trial and error here because the number is, is a little big. Long division won't work. I don't know what the number is. Options for x. So I try 0. Does 8 divide into 86? No. Then I try 1. 186. 286, 386, which ones work? 7 is the only one that works? Have we tested them all? Who's actually doing it? Some people are actually doing it. 
we, in this case, we'd have to test them all, but on a smaller number, so it is a little bit faster. You might think, oh, I'm just gonna sit back, you know, let someone else do it. I'm not interested. In the test, you're gonna have to, and you don't want to do anything for the first time in a, in a test. A seven, the only one. It's like a little test. Hmm? She yeah. said seven. Yeah. It doesn't feel. It doesn't I just read out what she said. Why? <laughs> <laughs> she said seven. <laughs> I approve. She said seven. No number? Six. I just randomly made them. I don't know what they have to be. Six, eight, no. I guess no number is possible. It's hard to say. That digit is in the hundredth position. It's not easy to do intuitively. None of them? You've tested them all? Mm -hmm. All right, that's totally fine. That's a good example to show that maybe there's nothing. Hard as it is to believe, I guess that is possible now. Yeah. Mm. All right. It's good to see an example like that because what if randomly I have a quiz question that has an answer of none? Then, then you might think, well, I've never seen that before. There has to be an answer. So it's good. Uh, number three. Six to divide into six, three, nine, seven, something, eight. Having a name for that digit just makes it easier to reference uh, in other sentences. Just easier, more convenient. So now for six, first of all, I have to check the visibility by two. But I don't need the X for that. Regardless of what is in that place, it'll always be divisible by two. So that's an easy one, but I do need to have that. Next. Uh, for three, we need to check the sum of the digits. Let's go up here, which is six plus three plus nine plus seven plus that missing one plus eight. What do I get? Thirty-three. Thirty-three. Remember, even if you miscalculated that, at the end you can test your answer in your calculator and you'll know if everything was right or not. Thirty-three, so I need uh, three to go into thirty-three plus the missing digit. Now two is happy with any digit, so that's not a problem at all. But is three not every digit. What are my options for x? Zero, Zero for sure. It's going to be more. Three for 36. Six for 39. And nine. So there are many. There could be no answer. There could be only one answer. There could be many answers. We really don't know until we've done something. Also notice how many words I am writing, because it just makes it so clear and easy for everyone. For me, when I grade it, and for you when you look back and use it to study for the final. Everyone wins. And hopefully there is enough time in a quiz to have some words to make it easy. Two more. Uh, 11 to divide into 7 something to 8. Well, I know my test for 11. 
So I, uh, let's call it X. I need to check from right to left, 8 minus 2 plus X minus 7. What is that? Negative 1 plus the X will affect that, of course. So we need 11 to divide into negative 1 plus X. Well, that's more manageable. What are my options for X? One, because we've seen that an answer, a checked number of zero would work, and one will give me that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. No, it's the only answer. I can't have a double digit number for X, right? Single digit only. Any questions on that one? Yes. It can't be negative. No, it can be, but the smallest I can go for x is 0, and I'm negative 1. Oh, no, no, no. This is a single digit, right? A digit on its own is 0 to 9. Yeah. But in, in, place, in this number, I should check x equal to 0. This thing can be negative, but negative 1 doesn't work. But in another situation, I don't think it's ever going to work because my options are only 0 to 9. One more. One more. 5. So I'm looking at divisibility by 4, 2, 2, 8, 7, something. So in a situation like that, if you uh, do know how to use variables, even though we're still going to talk about that. If you're comfortable with variables, if I don't have the line under the x, it looks like multiplication. And that could be read the wrong way. So I really need a line under it to indicate it's a digit place. So I need 4 to divide into 70 something. 70 something. Well, that's a little bit easier because it's a two-digit number and the missing one is in the ones position. So 70, 71, 72, 32, 36, uh, can't go much higher, right? Can't have a 10. So I have two options in that case. So until I try work with it and figure it out, I really don't know how many numbers will be in the answer. Read through 7 if you want to, it's only for interest sake. It will not be tested in any way. And then we'll start chapter 10 tomorrow. <laughs>